Hey guys, what's going on? Counterspell Hater here, back with another EDH guide. So today I figured maybe we're, we take like a throwback period since like we don't have anything really exciting for Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. I mean, there is uh, the that one white legendary creature that Ian Commander would identify as all five colors, but not very interesting. So we'll take a look at the Locust God today. So for generic, a blue and a red, it is a legendary god flying 4-4. Four, four. Whenever you draw a card, you create a 1-1 one, one blue and red insect creature token with flying haste. And for two generic, blue and red, you can draw a card and then discard a card. And when the locust god dies, you return it to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step, which is nice because then you could avoid uh, paying commander turns. So let us begin with... Uh, cards that, of course, draws cards, uh, starting with Fateful Showdown. For two generic and double red is an instant that deals damage to target creature, player equal to the number of cards in your hand, and then has you discard all the cards in your hand, only then to draw you that many cards. Trident of Thassa. For two generic and double blue, it's a legendary enchantment artifact that states whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. And for one generic and a blue, it can tap uh, and creatures your opponent's control. I tap this turn of Fable. So it can force your opponent kind of into a trap, force them to attack and be left untapped and vulnerable. Enter the infinite. So eight, eight generic and quadruple blue for a sorcery that draws cards, draws you cards equal to the number of cards in your library, and then has you put a card from your hand on top of your library, and you have no maximum hand size until your next turn. So that, if you have the Locust got out, which at this point you probably will, because this is like 12 mana, then it's game over, because you're drawing like probably more than 50 cards. Uh, Alheimart's Archive for five generic, it's a legendary artifact that causes you to gain twice uh, the amount of life you normally would. And if you draw a card except the first one you draw, and each of your draw steps, uh, you draw two cards instead. So it doubles up the card draw. Teferi's Puzzle Box to go along with it. It's pretty nice because for four generic, it's an artifact. That states at the beginning of each player's draw step, that player puts the cards in his or her hand on the bottom of his or her library in any order and draws that many cards. So you'll be drawing double those cards and getting a new hand. Tectonic Reformation for one generic and a red. It's an enchantment that gives each land card in your hand cycling for one red, meaning you can, you can pay one red, discard that card from your hand, and draw a card or cycling two generic, which means you would just pay two to discard this card and draw a card. So if you have a bunch of lands in your hand that are doing you no good, then you can cycle them to draw cards, uh, get value from the Locust God and draw into like something that is helpful. Balakut Awakening and Balakut Stoneforge. So it's Balakut Stone, Stoneforge is a land that enters in tapped. I can only tap for a red. However, Balakut Awakening, for two generic and a red, it's an instant that has you put any number of cards from your hand on the bottom of your library and then draws you that many cards plus one. So you have like eight in your hand and then you play Balakut Awakening. So then that would be uh, not nine cards that you would draw. Molten Psyche, I think I pronounced that right, for one generic and double red. Is a sorcery that causes each player to shuffle the cards from his or her hand into his or her library and then draw that many cards. And Metalcraft, if you control three or more artifacts, then this spell deals damage to each opponent equal to the number of cards that player has drawn this turn. So, all in all, pretty nice. If we have three or more artifacts, this hurts even more for our opponents because it brings their life total down even more, which is just even more dangerous for them because of our flyers. Arjun, the Shifting Flame, four generic, a blue and a red. He is a legendary Sphinx Wizard with flying, five, five. 
And whenever you cast a spell, you put the cards in your hand on the bottom of the library in any order and then draw that many cards. So just keep casting a bunch of spells and that will draw you into a whole bunch of cards. It's all Primal Tide uh, for five generic and double blue. It is a legendary Elder Dinosaur that cannot be countered and gives you no maximum hand size. It's a 7-7. Seven, seven. And also, whenever an opponent casts a non-physical spell, you draw a card, and then you can discard three cards to exile and uh, resolve Primal Tide and return it to the battlefield. Tapped under its arms control at the beginning of the next end step. So keep this thing safe. Have it keep on drawing new cards. And it cannot be countered, and it continues to move hand size, which is very important. Skull Clamp for one. Generic, it's an artifact equipment uh, that gives the equipped creature uh, plus one, minus one. And whenever a equipped creature dies, you draw two cards. And then it's a guy in the equipped cost of one generic. So for one, you can equip this to one of your Locust tokens, uh, preferably probably after you swung, like with them and the and the damage. Uh, so you equip this to one of them, and then that's going to immediately die, causing Skull Clamp to trigger, drawing you two cards, making two more Locusts if you have the Scarab. And sorry, wrong god. The Lotus got out. So essentially, if you think about it, doubles up your Locusts if you have the mana to do so. Wind Reader Sphinx for five generic and double blue is a Sphinx with flying three seven. That states whenever a creature with flying attacks, so that's on any side of the battlefield. Doesn't say whenever a creature you play attacks, uh, so that can be you, your opponents, you may draw a card. So any flyer attacks, you may draw a card, and then that's another 1 1 locust. And if there's multiple flyers attacking, which for us there will be because we're because our locust tokens have flying and haste, that will uh, give us a lot more. Locust tokens. Uh, Consecrated Sphinx for four generic and double blue is a Sphinx of flying four six. And whenever an opponent draws a card, you may draw two. So this utilizes our opponents drawing cards to help us with our game plan by allowing us to draw two more than them. No Spine Dragon for five generic and double red is a dragon with flying. And when it enters the battlefield or I guess comes into play, uh, you may discard your hand and draw a card equal to damage dealt to target opponent this turn. Seven five. So if you attack someone and dealt like a lot of damage but not enough to kill them, then you could just play no spine dragon and draw a whole bunch of cards. Cavalier of Flame for two generic and triple red. It is an elemental knight. That for one generic and red can give a uh, creature to control plus one plus one and haste until its turn six five, and whenever it enters the battlefield, you may just uh, you discard any number of cards and then you draw that many, and when it dies, it deals X damage to target to each opponent and each plane token they control rises the number of land cards in your graveyard. So be sure to at least try and like this card a good amount of lands if they're doing you no good. Also, just discard a good amount of general to draw a bunch. And now I believe we get into, yeah, into stuff that utilizes our card draw. Starting off with Niv Mizzet Perun for triple blue and triple red. He is a legendary dragon wizard uh, who cannot be countered and has flying. He's a 5-5. Five five. Whenever you draw a card, Niv Mizzet Perun deals one damage to any target. And whenever a player casts an insert or sorcery spell, you draw a card. So that's anyone, you, your opponents. Yeah. Up next, we have Niv, Niv Mizzet Dra Dra Draco Genius. I, I think I pronounced that right. For two generic, double blue, double red. He's a legendary uh, dragon wizard. Flying 5-5 five, five once again. And when he deals comment damage, he deals damage to a player, you may draw a card. And then from one uh, blue and red, uh, he deals one damage to target for your player. So honestly, he should be like right here. Anyways, Niv Mizzet the Fire Mind 
for two generic, double blue, double red. He is a legendary dragon wizard flying four four. And whenever you draw a card, Niv visit the fire mine deals one damage to target pitcher or player. And then you can tap him to draw a card. Fist of Flame from one generic and red is an instant that draws you a card and gives target creature you control, uh, target creature trample and plus one plus O for each card you've drawn this turn uh, until end of turn. So if you've drawn a lot of cards, this could just end the game right here. And trample's a pretty big problem, so. Chasm Skulker, the two generic and a blue, is a squid horror that puts a that puts a pulse and pulse count on itself whenever you draw a card. And when it dies, it creates X11 one, one blue squid creature tokens with island walk, rises the number of pulse and pulse counters on Chasm Skulker, excuse me. Uh, creatures with island walk cannot be blocked as long as the defending player controls an island. And this uh, creature is going to be creating a ton of those when he dies because we're probably going to have drawn a lot of cards while this thing is alive. Ominous Seas, one generic and a blue, is an enchantment that puts a foreshadow counter on itself whenever you draw a card. And then you can remove eight foreshadow counters from it to create an 8-8 eight, eight blue Kraken creature token. And then cycling to two generic, and you can discard it for the cost of two mana and draw a card. But I would rather play this if I were you. Because this can also give you pretty big 8-8s eight, eight on the ground. Psychosis Crawler, for five generic, it's an artifact creature or four, whose power and toughness are each, each equal to the number of cards in your hand. And whenever you draw a card, each one loses one life. So as you're drawing cards, uh, your opponents are also losing life. And this thing is getting bigger and bigger. Psychic Corrosion for two generic and a blue is an enchantment that mills each opponent for two whenever you draw a card. I mean, they put the top two cards of their library into their graveyard. Sturmgeist uh, for three generic and double blue is a spirit with flying. Whose power and toughness are also each equal to the number of cards in your hand. And when it deals combat damage to a player, you draw a card. Jace's projection for two generic and double blue is a wizard illusion. Uh, two, two. And whenever you draw a card, it puts a plus one plus a counter on itself. And for three generic and a blue, you can put a loyalty counter on target. Jace planeswalker. Now, we get into the cards that help us utilize the tokens created by the Locust God. Starting with Chancellor of the Forge. For four generic and triple red is a giant 5-5 five five, uh, and can be revealed from your opening hand uh, if you do at the beginning of the first upkeep, put a 1-1 one, one red gong creature token with haste onto the battlefield. <coughs> Excuse me. And whenever it enters the battlefield, you put X, 1-1 one, one, red Dalvin creature tokens with haste onto the battlefield, where X is the number of creatures you control. And by the time we get this out, we probably will have a good amount of tokens, of Locust tokens. If if not, and it's like you play like Locust God in turn six and turn seven comes around, maybe wait a bit. That's my suggestion. Breath of Fury for two generic and double red is an enchantment aura that enchants a creature you control. And when that enchanted creature deals combat damage to a player, you sacrifice that creature and attach Breath of Fury to a creature you control. And if you do, un you untap all creatures you control. At and after this phase, there's an additional combat phase. So as long as your stuff goes unblocked, uh, you can storm in and possibly kill your opponent within the turn. Perforos, God of the Forge. For three generic and a red, he is a legendary enchantment creature god with indestructible. He's a six five. However, as long as your devotion, the red is less than five. Spurfos is a creature, so your devotion uh, towards a color uh, depends on how many opponents you have on the battlefield under your control that has like mana symbols of that color. So, for instance, if we just have Perforos on our battlefield, our devotion to red would just be one. 
However, we had her frozen say like Chancellor of the Forge, and then Breath of Fury. Our devotion would be six, meaning Kerberos would then be a creature. Speaking of which, whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, Kerberos deals two damage to each opponent. And then for two to nine and red, he can give your all of your creatures plus one plus zero until end of turn. In the web of war, the three generic and double red is an enchantment that uh, can give, that gives uh, target creature you control plus two plus O and haste uh, whenever a creature comes into play. That creature gets it. Excuse me. Uh, shared animosity for two generic and a red is an enchantment that whenever a creature you control attacks, it gets plus one plus oh until in the turn for each other attacking creature that shares a creature's type. And since we'll have a lot of locust tokens attacking, they're going to get real buff real quick. So this could add up to a lot of damage for our opponents. Impact tremors for one generic and a red is an enchantment that states whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, it deals one damage to each opponent. Astronauts alter for three generic, it's an artifact that you can sacrifice your creatures to. To add two colors, mana to your mana pool. Uh, Dream Shaper Shaman for five generic and a red is an enchantment creature, Minotaur Shaman. Uh, five four, that states at the beginning of your end step, you may pay two generic and a red and sacrifice a non land permanent, so just sacrifice one of your locust tokens. And if you do, you reveal cards on the top of your library until you reveal a non land permanent card. You put that card onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So it can cheat stuff out for you. Mana Echoes for two generic and double red is enchantment that states whenever a creature enters the battlefield, uh, you may add an amount of colors mana equal to the number of creature control that cherry creature type with it. So as we're drawing cards and making locust tokens uh, with the locust god, this is giving us more mana to keep on doing said thing. So all in all, this just allows us to have nearly infinite mana if not just infinite mana like may as well be coat of arms five generic it's an artifact that gives each creature uh plus one plus one for each other creature on the battlefield that shares at least one creature type with it and since our locusts obviously share a creature type the only one being insect uh or whatever creature type they have then they're going to be getting a real big buff since we're creating a lot of them and they have haste. So that means the fresh new ones can attack immediately and that's just more damage that's gonna add up real quick. Pyrexian Ultra for three generic, it's an artifact. You can sacrifice a creature to it to add one mana of hand one color. So you've got Eshnos Ultra for like two mana and then you've got this for like one mana of hand one color. So you've got mana that's of, of any color and then you've got like just mana. Altar of Dementia for two generic. It's an artifact that you can sacrifice a creature to uh, mill target player for a uh, mill target player equal to the sacrifice creature's power. So sacrifice like a bunch of tokens. You can possibly mill someone out. Scion of Draco for 12 generic is an artifact creature dragon that has domain meaning this spell costs two less to cast for each basic land type among lands you control. Since we're playing blue red, uh, this will only cost us like eight instead of 12, which is still pretty hefty. Four, four, flying. Each creature you control has vigilance if it's white, hexproof if it's blue. So our tokens will have hexproof, lifelink if it's black, first strike if it's red, and our tokens are also red. So, uh, and tremble if it's green. So our tokens now have Hexproof and First Strike in addition to other buffs and Haste and Flying, making them hard to block, even harder to kill, and it's just a mess for our opponent. Stigma Lasher for double red is a creature elemental shaman with Wither, meaning it deals damage to creatures in the form of minus one, minus one counters. It's a 2-2. And when it deals damage to a player, uh, that player can't gain life for the rest of the game. So this just completely stops your opponent's life game plan. So if they're playing white and they're like mono white life game, 
they are out of the picture. Unless they have like a changed life total effect, then they are done. Uh, meaning that your locust tokens can swing in without it being in vain. They have Dreadhorde Champion for two generic and double red. He is a legendary zombie minotaur warrior with trample 5-4. And when he deals combat damage to a player or planeswalker, uh, you may discard any number of cards. If you do, you draw that many cards and add that much red mana. And until in turn, that red mana uh, is not lost at steps and phases end. So can draw you a bunch of cards if you discard a bunch and add a bunch of red mana to your mana pool. So really, I don't, I think I probably should have put them up there, but oh well, it's fine. Uh, Scourge of the Throne for four generic and double red. Uh, he, it's a dragon with flying into throne, uh, five five, meaning that when it attacks the player with the uh, most life or tied for the most life, you put a plus plus counter on that creature. And whenever Scourge of the Throne attacks, for the first time each turn, if it's attacking the player with the most life or tied for most life, you want to have all attacking creatures. And after this phase, there's an additional combat phase. So, yeah, you want to have all your look, just get the idea. Neheb, the Eternal, for three generic and double red, is a legendary zombie minotaur warrior with a flick three, meaning when it becomes blocked, defending the player loses three life. It's a four six, and the beginning of your post combat main phase, meaning after combat, so your second main phase, you add red mana to mana pool for each one life your opponents have lost this turn. And since we have uh, flying locust tokens, that will probably end up doing a decent amount of damage to our opponents. Uh, and we'll have a lot of them. Uh, the, the eternal here is going to get us a lot of mana. Terror of the Peach for three generic and double red is a dragon with flying, and it's a 5-4, and it costs your opponent, your opponent an additional three life to target this uh, creature with spells and ability. Uh, spells, just spells in general. No abilities, I was about to say. Uh, but whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, Terror of the Peaks deals damage equal to that uh, creature's power to any target. So since you have a lot of tokens entering in, that's going to be a lot of Terror of the Peaks triggers. Therefore, a lot of damage being thrown around. So possibly killing a bunch of creatures, opponents, maybe even, who knows. Uh, Ura Brask, the hidden, for three generic and double red, is a legendary predator that gives creatures you control haste, 4-4, four, four, and creatures your opponents control and a battle attack, meaning that they might not be able to save themselves from you uh, when I when it comes around, or if they're trying to like produce blockers, they can't do it with creatures now. Jace, ingenious mind mage. And since this is a Jace planeswalker, I will add that Jace's protection can affect this by putting loyalty counters on it. Anyways, for four generic and uh, double blue is a linger and a planeswalker Jace, obviously, who comes in with five loyalty. Even plus one of them to draw a card. Plus one, untap all creatures you control, meaning that if for some reason you do not have enough creatures to like block an onslaught or something, uh, now you can, thanks to Jace, untapping all of your creatures that have attacked. And then minus nine, gain control of up to three target creatures. So that can be pretty brutal. That can just close out the game with how many locust tokens you have, meaning that you just like defend Jace until he's able to get to his minus nine and even have him live. Angie's projection can help. Burn out of the stake for two generic and triple red is a sorcery that, as an additional cost to cast it, you must tap any number of untapped creatures to control. Uh, so that means Jace will come in handy. And burn at the stake as a result deals damage to target creature or player equal to three times the number of creatures tapped this way. So you tap like 10 locusts down and when casting this. That is 30 damage that you could throw at an opponent, which is insane. Uh, next up, we have Dragon Shift, which for one generic, a blue and a red, 
it can uh, turn target creature you control into a 4-4 blue and red dragon uh, that loses all abilities but, but gains flying. Or you can cast it for its overload cost, which is for three generic, double blue and double red. Uh, and you make so if you're, and a card with overload, if you cast it for its overload cost, you change the, its text by replacing all instances of target with each, meaning that now this would read until in turn each creature you control becomes a four for blue and red dragon, loses all abilities and gains flying. And this is an instant, meaning you can cast it during combat uh, when your locusts are attacking, uh, meaning they will become tapped and attacking four fours with flying. Uh, and that could just close out the game right there. Uh, gravitational shift uh, for three generic and double blue is an enchantment that gives creatures with flying plus two plus zero. Oh, and creatures without flying, minus two, minus O. Oh. So negatively affects non flyers and affects probably most likely all of your creatures. Because most of them, Locust, why well, I, well, I should have said is it's probably benefits you more. There we go. Finally, we have this monster of a card, Synthetic Destiny. I'd like to tell you a story uh, with the. I think it was like the Phantom Quadron uh, Precon Commander. When I saw the one that uh, starred Rysel, the, the Ever Watchful, uh, the, the Spirit deck. Uh, I once actually played all the creatures in that deck with. This card, in addition to Day of the Dragons uh, and uh, Heliod's, uh, who was it? Angel, even Angel of Heli Heliod, I think it was, or Dictate. Uh, no, it was, I don't know, but I once played like all the creatures in that deck uh, with this card, so it's pretty good because. You exile all creatures you control when you cast this for four generic and double blue. And at the beginning of the next end step, you reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal that many creature cards and put all cards revealed this way onto the battlefield. Then shuffle the rest of the real revealed cards in, into your library. So that means you can get like almost every creature card you've seen in this video. So Terror of the Peaks, Urubrask, the Hidden, the Hebs, both of them, all three Niv Mizzets featured. Uh, even Locust God, if he's in your deck for some reason. Uh, a whole bunch of, and essentially, if you cast this at the right time, you can get every uh, creature card that's in your deck on the battlefield. Spine Rock Knoll, uh, it's a lane with Hideaway, meaning that when it that it enters the battlefield tap, and when it does, you uh, look at the top four cards of your library, and you exile one face down, and then put the rest on the bottom of your library. And then Spinal Arc Null can tap to out of bed, or for red, it can tap. And you may play the exile card without paying its mana cost. If an opponent was dealt seven more damage this turn, which most likely they will have because we're in red, and we're making a bunch of hasty locust tokens. Uh, so this should be pretty easy for us. Shell Dock Isle Hideaway does the same thing, uh, except this taps for blue, or for blue, it can tap. You may play the remove card because this was in Lorwyn, and Shell Dock Isle has not been reprinted because of how bad it is. Because you can only play the XL card if a library has 20 or fewer cards in it. Now, middle decks can really take advantage of this, but probably in the late game. Uh, I put this in here because like you're drawing a bunch of cards. Not to mention, I should probably, right now, uh, that brings us to like time to eat. the weakness of this deck. Be careful, because you can accidentally deck yourself, probably, since you're drawing so many cards. Isolated Watchtower, it's a land that can tap for a colors, or for two generic, it can tap and allow you to try one, meaning you look at the top part of your library, and then you decide whether it goes back on top or on the bottom of your library. And then you may 
And then you may reveal the top card of your library. If a basic land card is revealed this way, you put it onto the back of the tab. Uh, and, but you can only activate this ability if an opponent controls at least two more lands than you. Which being blue, red, and not ramping any sense of lands, uh, unlike green, this will be very useful and will be able to activate this ability probably very often. Homeward Path. Uh, it's a land that can tap for a cost, or it can tap, and each player gain control of all creatures he or she owns. So that means it. So this, so what do I have this here? Well, your opponent could just play like a mass gain control of creature spell, like a uh, mob rule, and gain control of all your locusts, right? So then you just use homework path before they swing, like before combat. And then you take all of your little locusts back. Pretty useful. And then we have our 23 uh, basic islands. And then our 23 basic mountains. And with that, uh, the end of this uh, EDH guide starring the locust god. 2022 edition. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. We're only one subscriber away uh, from 10 of them to do a 10 sub special. I like the view count you guys are giving to uh, some of the videos like Tox Real, Well Health. But I'd like it if maybe you'd uh, go visit some of the other videos. I like. I like because I will like it when all my videos get support. Uh, keep watching Turn of Pain. That was going for a while. But I, I appreciate you guys watching anyways. Uh, don't forget to hit the notification bell. That way you don't miss more content like this. Go watch my other videos that I've done in the past. And share this video with others that you may know of. Anyways. That's going to do it. I'll see you guys next time.